Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. A man breaks into a home on the city's west side and is confronted by the homeowner. We'll tell you how that unfolded coming up on GMSA. Dozens of people are feared dead this morning in a Russian bombing of a school in eastern Ukraine. We have the latest from Eastern Europe. And back here at home, taking a live look out there, 75 degrees, already a warm start. Will we get to the temps that we saw yesterday? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday, May 8th. It is Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day out there to all happy the amazing Mother's Day. moms. So yesterday, we I think we broke a record. Did we? I think so. Oh, Sarah, you were talking about that. Yeah. Record. We did break a record. We got to 101 yesterday. That beats the record of 100. So yeah. soon. I know, and I'm going <laughs> to sound like a broken record, too, because we are going to have more heat today Oof. and even more humidity than yesterday in the afternoon. So it is going to be a hot Mother's Day for sure. Outside right now, temperatures are already in the mid to upper 70s. It's 75 in New Braunfels, 72 in Kerrville, 76 in San Antonio, 78 in Del Rio, 75 in Carrizo Springs. A closer view around the metro area, 73 in Seguin, 77 in Pleasanton, 75 in Hondo, 70 in Bernie, and 73 in Comfort. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Here's a Mother's Day forecast card for you, specially designed by not a five-year-old, but me, Sarah Smite. So we're going to be looking at total sunshine this afternoon after some morning clouds. By noon, we'll be at 89 degrees. So if you have any kind of Mother's Day brunch plans or anything like that, it's already going to be warm by noon. And then in the afternoon, forecasting 99 for the high temperature today. But here's the thing. It's going to feel hotter than that because of the heat index. So the high humidity will make it feel anywhere from 100 to 106, even hotter out west. So it is going to be a very toasty Mother's Day. The record for the day today is 102. So I don't think we're going to get to the record. Again, this is the heat index value, but it's going to be a close one. Coming up, I'll show you across the KSAT 12 viewing area how hot it's going to be and whether or not we'll see any relief in our near future. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a person trying to break into a home on the city's west side was caught by the homeowner. This happening overnight. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live and explains exactly what happened. Good morning, Jonathan. Was anyone hurt? Good morning, Sarah. And in this case, yes, the man who broke into the home was taken to University Hospital. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like. We know San Antonio police were called out close or around 1.30 this morning to this home on Wilmot Street and Noak near North General McMullen. Police tell us once the homeowner heard the intruder inside his home, he grabbed his gun and shot him. The man who broke into the house managed to take off, but EMS were able to quickly find him down the road. But that wasn't the end of it. Police say the suspect became angry and managed to escape the ambulance, but again, didn't get too far. He was found by police down the road. Now detectives were on scene questioning and talking to the homeowner. This case remains under investigation. Again, that suspect was taken to University Hospital and we're told he is expected to be okay. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, we've been covering the election for a while now. The votes are in and we have the final number. San Antonio voters approving the city's largest ever bond just last night. That's right, $1.2 billion. That bond was broken up into six propositions from streets to drainage to parks, even affordable housing. All six passed. In Bear County, 91,656 votes were cast in total, or 7.6% of the county's 1.2 million registered voters. That includes 47,866 in-person early votes, 17,936 mail-in ballots, and 25,854 votes on Election Day. Mayor Ron Nuremberg declared victory for the bond just before 10 p.m. last night, and he declared victory for the six props, making up this $1.2 billion bond package. At that point, each of the propositions, A through F, had between about 60% and 72% approval rating. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says the results showed voters' faith in the city's future and showed faith in each other as San Antonians. We are laser focused on keeping the promise that we all made to each other back when the, in the height of the last two years challenges, which is that we are not satisfied to going back to the way things were. We want to come back stronger, more equitable and more resilient as a city. And that's what this vote says. 
So the city has said the bond program will not raise the property tax rate. And now to the two state constitutional amendments. The first will impact property taxes for elderly and disabled homeowners. We're talking about Prop 1. So that item would reduce the amount of property taxes the elderly and disabled pay to public schools. So let's take a look at the results. This amendment easily passing more than 80% of the vote. Voters in Bear County along the similar lines, many of them voting to pass the amendment. Another constitutional amendment focused on everyone's homestead exemption. This would help property owners on their property taxes. All right, so Prop 2 would raise that homestead exemption from $25,000 to $40,000. According to the Texas Tribune, homeowners would save about $176 on average on their property tax bill. So let's take a look at these results. This amendment also easily passing last night with more than 80% of the vote. When compared to Bear County, Voters in Bear County were nearly identical to how the state voted. Some of the top stories we were following this morning. Police searching for a driver who left the scene of a crash. That crash ending with two people injured. Officers there saying it happened near Steve's Avenue and New Braunfels just before 1 a.m. yesterday morning. Police say someone driving a van ran a red light, sent that vehicle into a pole. Now inside that car, a 41-year-old woman and a 15-year-old boy both taken to the hospital. Both are expected to recover. Police still searching for the driver of the van they believe to be responsible. A scary scene in Round Rock, just north of Austin. Police receiving a call just after 12 yesterday from a man who said he had been shot multiple times by his neighbors. Shortly after that, officers received another report of a man wearing a black trench coat, carrying an AR style rifle on Old Settlers Boule Boulevard around the same time. Residents in the area were asked to shelter in place at a caution. Those outside the area were asked to stay away. The suspect was later found dead in a nearby wooded area. It's still unclear if he was shot himself or died by police gunfire. Now to the latest in Eastern Europe, where at least 60 people feared dead after a Russian bombing of a school in eastern Ukraine. And this is all according to a regional governor over there. And Ukrainian leaders are warning that attacks could only worsen leading up to Russia's holiday on Monday, celebrating Nazi Germany's defeat, which is 77 years ago. President Zelensky is urging people to heed air raid warnings. ABC's Karina Mitchell explains. As Russia gets ready to celebrate Victory Day on Monday, the day Soviet forces defeated Nazi Germany, Russian forces are intensifying their attacks in Ukraine. These images posted by Ukrainian government officials show a school in Luhansk they say was bombed by Russian forces. 90 people were taking shelter there. 30 people were rescued Saturday. Rescue efforts are resuming today. Six missiles struck the port city of Odessa on Saturday. Ukraine's military command said four rockets hit a furniture factory in a residential area. CIA Director William Burns with a warning about Russian President Vladimir Putin's new offensive. He's in a frame of mind in which he doesn't believe he can afford to lose. Meantime, the Ukrainians are fighting back. They released dramatic new video they say shows drone strikes destroying a Russian ship in the Black Sea, also pushing the Russians further back from the Kharkiv region in the northeast and south. In Mariupol, Ukrainian officials say all women, children and elderly civilians have made it out of the Azovstal steel plant. Nearly six million people have fled Ukraine since February. First Lady Jill Biden meeting with some of them while in Romania. Wasn't it heartbreaking, the little girl that said her wish was to be with her daddy, and then another said, my wish is to go home. I mean, you could see it. Those children really have suffered. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Time now, 609, 75 degrees out. Much more to come on GMSA. Just ahead, hundreds of local pets spayed and neutered in a single day at a massive event. We'll have those details. And speaking of pets, got to be safe today because it's going to be hot out there. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey what you can expect. KSAT 12 celebrates Military City USA, powered by USAA. Young men and women who enlist in the United States Air Force arrive in San Antonio, Texas or Military City, USA. 
New recruits begin their basic military training at Lackland Air Force Base to gain important and crucial skills to become an airman. Here's a look at basic expeditionary airman skills and training, also known as BEAST. Whoa, place your weapon above your head! So this exercise, this is a culmination of every single thing that the trainees have learned out in basic training. So when they come here from their line squadrons, they've already learned their base defense skills, which we call FEST, TCCC, which is how they treat a combat casualty. Alarm yellow. New recruits will train on different levels that test their overall readiness before deployment overseas. And then at the beginning of the week, we teach them their chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear training skills. So this exercise is them taking all those different skills that they've learned from the week, and they put it into one integrated exercise to show that they can actually do the mission in an expeditionary environment. This right here, baseline, many of these trainees from the day one when they hit the ground will be ready for deployment. Some of them will, some of them will not. So this right here at a minimum will give them those skills that they need to fulfill their job. Well, spay, neuter, inject, protect San Antonio or SNPSA hosted their 53rd Big Fix event yesterday with the help of their partners, Animal Care Services, San Antonio Fire Department and HEB. All right, so over 450 pets spayed and neutered in single day vaccinations and microchipping also offered for free. Now, the event was open to people living in certain zip codes identified by ACS, Animal Care Services, as areas that are in high need and would benefit from resources coming to them. So the goal is to reduce the number of animals able to reproduce and cut down on the city's overpopulation. Spay and neuter your pets, vaccinate your pets, you help save lives. Your, your one animal really does matter. So the Big Fix events are free for those in qualified zip codes. Stipsa is always looking for donations and volunteers. And of course, we have so many more ways that you can help out right now. Just head to KSAT.com. And if you were following on KSAT.com or the Weather Authority app yesterday, you would have known it was super hot out there. Oh my goodness, so too hot. hot for those pups paws on concrete or I asphalt. Know. So if you have to, if you're going to be walking your dog today, just know, do it in the shade because it is going to be another hot one. I want to show you guys just how hot it was yesterday. Look at the high temperatures yesterday, a record smashing high in San Antonio, 101 degrees. And then look at Del Rio, 107, 108 in Carrizo Springs. Oh my goodness, 107 in Laredo. By the way, the all time high temperature in San Antonio ever recorded is 111 degrees. So we're just 10 degrees off of that in early May. Now, the average high this time of year is 84, and so today, once again, we're going to have another hot one for us, well above the average high of 84. And unlike yesterday, it's going to stay humid. It's very humid outside right now with dew points in the 70s. That is oppressive summertime humidity. And if you saw the forecast yesterday, you know that uh, the the dew point graphic here in the afternoon, the dew points dropped all the way down into the 50s and it really wasn't all that humid in the afternoon. It was so hot, but today it's going to stay humid. Even though the dew point's going to dip a little bit, those dew points in the mid 60s are going to give us quite the heat index today. So looking at the future cast, we've got some clouds out there this morning, but those clouds are going to dissipate. We should be able to see full sun by the late morning and then into the afternoon total sunshine. Here's a look at the high temperatures today. So technically it will not be as hot outside with a forecast high of 99 in San Antonio, but it's going to feel just as hot because of the high heat index. It'll uh, be 102 in Castroville, 102 in Poteet, 103 in Pleasanton, 99 in Seguin, 100 in New Braunfels, 98 in Comfort, 103 in Uvalde, and 102 in Lost Maples. But watch this. With the high humidity, this is a look at the forecast heat index value. We're going to have heat index values anywhere from 100 to 107 degrees around San Antonio. Hotter further to the south, but still, either way you slice it, this is a toasty forecast. It could even feel up to 110 in some places west of San Antonio later on today. Now, looking outside right now, you can see that we've got a few clouds out there and visibility is lower in spots because of higher humidity. So visibility 
visibility as low as six miles in Port SA. Not only can you feel the humidity, but you can see it out there in some cases. And, and so it's going to be a hot one. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast staying cloudy until about seven o'clock. And then we'll be quickly seeing those skies clear, partly cloudy by 10. It'll be 80 degrees. If you're celebrating mom today, perhaps going out for a Mother's Day brunch. This is a look at how hot it's going to be during brunch. Temperatures are going to climb into the 90s, so it's going to be hot during brunch. So try to get a seat inside if you can, or at least try to uh, be in the shade. Winds are going to be from the south today. They're actually going to pick up into the afternoon. We'll see winds of about 15 miles per hour from the south. In the afternoon, that's when we're going to hit 99. It's going to be awfully close to 100, but feeling like it regardless with that high humidity. And tonight it's going to be difficult for us to cool down. Now, if there is one saving grace to the heat today, it's that it's going to be breezy. Winds will be from the south gusting up to about 25 miles per hour throughout the day today. So if you can find some shade, at least there will be a breeze on the satellite and radar. We've got some showers and storms across uh, the northern tier of the United States, but notice how this is all going up and over uh, both Texas and Oklahoma. We've got a ridge of high pressure, which is going to keep things dry and it's going to settle over Texas and the eastern half of the United States today, uh, pardon me, this week. And so even though May is typically our rainiest month of the year, this upcoming week is going to be relatively dry, only a 10% chance for a stray shower storm Tuesday, and it's going to be hot. Temperatures are going to be in the mid 90s every day. Heat index will make it feel closer to 100 each day too, Max and Sarah. So summertime forecast uh, during the second week of May here. Cool. Not cool. 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 <laughs> Definitely not cool. Quite the opposite. But it is important. You know, these temperatures can be dangerous, so make sure to be safe, hydrate, be smart. Yeah. Walk your dogs early in the morning. Yeah, or I was very I was late at say night. Sunscreen. Sunblock. Sunblock, because you're like the ultimate. SPF 45 at least. Wow. All right, just about 620, 75 degrees out. Oh, actually, watch this game yesterday. Let's go. What'd you think? Uh, well, that's for you to say. Okay, <laughs> Houston. Getting a, a big W, taking on the Tigers. We have a recap just ahead. Sarah might recap it. I don't know. Hey, but as we head into break, today is Mother's Day. Oh, Aww. there's my mom. Happy Mother's Day, Patty. This was taken um, at my wedding in March. Aww. Looks beautiful. Happy Mother's Love Day. Love you, Mom. Oh, and there you go. Mom, happy Mother's Day. If you're watching, I know you're across the country. You might not be awake just yet. Happy Mother's Day. The best role model I could ask for. Happy Mother's Day to all of those amazing, strong moms out there. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back. And hey, we got baseball. Astros hosting the Detroit Tigers, two ball clubs that are headed in different directions early on in the season. Houston squeaks out the win at three to two. Astros moving to 17 and 11, while Detroit, who has not had much luck in their sports recently, they're falling to eight and 18. Still early on in the season though. All right, Rangers back in action today. They got a date with the Yankees. That game set for 1235 this afternoon in New York. And of course, actually, Sarah Spivey just bringing this up. A stunner at the this year's Kentucky Derby, a long shot winner. We're going to have so much more coming up on our next half hour of GMSA. Did you ever uh, make your, your horse race name? I thought, I can't remember what it was. Okay. I have to look it up. So there's a template where if you put the month you were born in your first name, you create your name. What was mine? Like a very normal horse? It was something really mad yeah. and boring. It was look like at a this very tease. normal horse. We're going to have our, our racing names <laughs> yeah. coming up. Yeah. Can't All right. wait. Time now, just about 624, 75 degrees out. Sarah Spivey. Happy Mother's Day. Aww. This is my mother, Debbie. Happy Mother's Day, Debbie. I love you so much. Our producer was saying that we have the same exact smile. I agree. Happy <laughs> Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. <laughs> we know where you got your beautiful looks from. All right, well, as we head into break, this is Jonathan Cotto along with his mom, Oh, well, Aww. she's just adorable, as so is Jonathan Cotto. Happy birthday to all Happy of birthday. our Mother's Day. I'm Happy sorry. Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. We'll be back. I'll get you some coffee, Thank Sarah. you. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome back and happy Mother's Day out there. Time now, 628, 75 degrees out. We have so much more to come on GMSA, including the latest on that massive fire burning in New Mexico. 
And the latest on an overnight shooting on the city's west side. Jonathan Coates are joining us live with all the details. Good morning and welcome back and happy Sunday. 631 this Sunday, May 8th, and it is Mother's Day. Happy so Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to we all the amazing mom. moms out there. And I got to say, if anyone's out and about, if you have big plans for Mother's Day brunch, bring a hat. Big hat. Big number sunblock. I was going to say 45 is the minimum. I think so. Okay. I think that's a safe number to go with. Glad we have our um, resident dermatologist. <laughs> yeah, I try. I okay, try. but yes, you guys are absolutely right. It's going to be hot today and sunny, although outside right now, you'll take a look out there and it's fairly cloudy. I mean, you can see the humidity, can't you, there on the horizon? Whew, it's humid. Out at San Antonio International Airport, it's 76, it's 79 at Simpson, 74 in Kelly, uh, at Kelly, and 75 at JBSA Randolph. Winds are breezy from the south-southeast, 10 to 15 miles per hour, pumping in that humidity. Uh, and here's a look at temperatures elsewhere across the KSAT 12 viewing area. 74 Uvalde, 78 in Pleasanton, 72 in Kerrville, 75 in New Braunfels, it's 77 in Eagle Pass. And uh, again, it is very humid. Dew points are in the 70s. That's the summertime dew point, and we're going to have summertime heat today for your Mother's Day. Here's a look at the forecast for the day today. By 10, we'll be seeing clearing skies and we'll be looking at sunny skies for most of the day. Already at noon, we're going to be close to 90. And then for the afternoon, we're forecasting a high of 99, but it's going to feel anywhere from 101 to 107 today. At least we're going to have a bit of a breeze gusts up to 25 miles per hour. Coming up, I'm going to show you high temperatures across the San Antonio metro area. And of course, a look at the week ahead, whether or not we're going to see any relief from the heat. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police investigating what was a break in at home on the city's west side. We're learning at least one person taken to the hospital. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Good morning, Jonathan. Do you have an update? Good morning, Sarah. Yes, definitely an eventful morning for San Antonio police who responded to that scene and a lot more running than that person who broke into the home was, I'm sure, was planning on doing. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like. We know San Antonio police responded close to 1.30 this morning to this home on Wilmot Street at Noak near General McMullen. Police tell us once the homeowner heard the intruder inside his home, he grabbed his gun and shot him. The man who broke into the house managed to take off, but EMS were able to quickly find him down the road, but that wasn't the end of it. Police say the suspect became angry and managed to escape the ambulance, but again, didn't get too far. He was found by police down the road. Now, detectives were on scene speaking and questioning the homeowner. They're continuing to actively investigate this case, and again, the suspect who broke into that home was taken to University Hosp Hospital, and we're told he is expected to be okay. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Several local school districts putting their own ideas to voters yesterday, but none bigger than Northside ISD's nearly $1 billion proposal. So the school district has said this bond program will not include a tax increase. The $992 million bond, it was approved by a 57% count of Northside voters. So the bond will pay for upgrading more than 20 existing Northside ISD schools, some of which are decades old. The largest part of the proposal allots $645.5 million to be invested in schools such as John Jay, Holmes, and Taft High Schools. And ISD Superintendent Dr. Brian Wood said this bond proposal is urgent because costs are only increasing. Now, we have been following so many of our local elections. For more on this bond as well as election day results, what they mean for you, just head to KSAT.com. Crime Stoppers, getting the word out on an ATM robbery. Police need your help, so go ahead and just look at your screen. They're looking for two suspects in this case. The pictures, they're a little hard to see, but police believe those suspects and their vehicles are shown on the images. Investigators say two suspects robbed an armor truck while guards were trying to load an ATM with cash. This was near Bandera Road and Woodlawn back in January. Police say one suspect shot at the guards before taking off and a black Dodge Charger. If you can help in this case and may know any information, you can anonymously leave a tip by calling this number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. You could be eligible for up to an award reward of $5,000. 
Some of the top stories we were following this morning in New Mexico, the Calf Canyon and Hermit's Peak fires, they've actually merged into one single fire and it's torn through an area larger than the city of Chicago. Firefighters over there believe this wildfire is only 21% contained. Here's the thing, high winds are making it dangerous for firefighting aircrafts to take flight. A lot of families have been left homeless. Thousands have had to be evacuated. Well, country star Mickey Gilly has died at the age of 86. He is perhaps best known for Gillies, his successful honky tonk club in Texas, which was the setting in the John Travolta hit movie Urban Cowboy. As recording artist Gilly charted 17 number one country records over the course of his career. In 1989, he was one of the first major country singers to open his own theater in Branson, Missouri, which is where he was at the time of his death. All right, a huge upset in the 148th Kentucky Derby. Yesterday, Rich Strike came charging up the rail to overtake the leaders in the closing strides. Forget this, an 80 to 1 upset in the run for the Roses jockey. Sonny Leon guided Rich Strike from well back in the 20 horse field to run by 4 to 1 favorite Epicenter and Zandon at Churchill Downs. Now, Rich Strike wasn't even in the Derby field until Friday when another horse had to scratch. Rich Strike earned $1.86 million for just his second career victory. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. All right, back here at home, the population in and around San Antonio is booming, so much so that an advisory committee has created a first draft of a new district map based on the latest census numbers. Here's the thing. This map would shift the boundaries of almost every city council district. This proposed change is not final, and there are still a lot of questions. That is why later this morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., a member of the city attorney's office will join us to break down what the changes could mean for you and what could come next. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us at 8 a.m. for all the answers. Before we go, you mm -hmm. teased earlier, what is your oh. Kentucky Derby name? All it right. is the... Original Normal Horse. That's there, Max's. Yeah, there's an equation I'll post it on Twitter where you can create your name. What is yours? Mine is, now that's a slip and fall. Fantastic. <laughs> Sarah Spivey's? Was the honorable slip and the fall. The honorable slip and fall. Fantastic. We're slipping and falling today. <laughs> Time now, 638, 75 degrees out. All right. The moment new recruits arrive at JBSA Lackland, they begin eight weeks of intense training to become an American airman. Ahead on GMSA, we're giving you a glimpse inside U.S. Air Force basic training and revealing what it means to aim high. And taking a live look out there. Oof. It is rough to start the morning yesterday. Record high heat for the day. What does today look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey. All right, it's Mother's Day, and as we head to break, here is our producer right now, Carlo. Carlo, what is your mom's name? Yvonne. Yvonne is also a elementary teacher, correct? At Cerna Elementary, happy Mother's Day. We love Carlo, and we hope you have a great day. All right, and that's not all. Steven Chavez's mom. Steven Chavez, one of our top photographers out and about this morning with Jonathan Cotto. So happy Mother's Day to his mother and all of the amazing moms Are they out at a there. concert? I think so. I think the last picture from last year, they were at a concert. Mm, she's, I, cool, she's a cool mom. She's a cool mom. He is wearing a Metallica shirt, so it's possible. Good morning and welcome back. Like we've been talking about, it is expected to be another hot day in San Antonio. A reminder, cooling centers are open in and around the city and the county. This was the scene yesterday at the community center. For a full list, there's a lot of cooling sites open out there. Just head to KSAT.com. Yeah, yesterday was a good day. I went I went to the movies. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Good I went for to go you. vote. Yep. Both places had their AC cranked. You yep. also went golfing. So. I did, but I went before. She 12. left that part out because she didn't want to encourage people to be outside. I went before noon. Did you put on uh, sunblock? Oh, yeah. Of course she did. Oh, yeah. SPF 75. Now, why I don't look red? <laughs> Guys, we got up to 101 yesterday, so that broke the record for the day. Mm. Yesterday will be the hottest 
May 7th in the record books for San Antonio. Wow. Today, we're going to be close to 100, but it's going to feel like it anyway because of the high humidity. I mean, just take a look outside right now. You can see the humidity on the horizon. It's very humid. It's cloudy outside right now, but these clouds are temporary. We're going to see total sunshine today uh, uh, once again. Now, winds are from the south southeast at about 15 miles per hour, and notice that the humidity is very high. Dew points in the 70s. That's a summertime dew point. It's 74 in Hondo, 78 in Catula, 75 Carrizo Springs, 77 in Eagle Pass, 76 in Kennedy, 72 in Kerrville. Let's take a, a, a closer look at what the highs are going to be today. And this is a look at the forecast highs. It's going to be up to 99 in San Antonio, but it'll be 103 in Pleasanton, 103 in Eagle Pass, 104 in Carrizo Springs, and 102 in Del Rio. As we take a closer look at the forecast highs around the metro area, you'll see that even though some areas may not technically reach 100, it's still going to be high. Hot. It's going to be 97 in Bernie, 99 in Seguin, 100 in New Braunfels, 102 in Von Army, 102 in Elmendorf, 102 in Hondo and in Castroville. And unlike yesterday, it's going to stay humid all day long. Yesterday, our dew points dipped down into the 50s in the afternoon. Uh, and today, though, we're only going to see them dip into the 60s. So it's going to stay humid during the peak heat of the day, which is pretty much from about 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. It's going to stay humid humid. So this is a look at the forecast heat index values. It could feel up to 109 in Pleasanton. It could feel up to 112 in Carrizo Springs. It could feel up to 105 in New Braunfels and feel like 100 in Kerrville. In San Antonio, a heat index range of 101 to 106 today. So you're going to want to make sure to stay hydrated, stay in the shade if you can, uh, and put on that sunblock, as Sarah said. But here's a look at the wind gusts. So we are going to have some relief in the shade in the form of breezy conditions. Winds are going to be from the south gusting up to about 20 to 25 miles per hour today. That is a bit breezy, too. So if you have any kind of outdoor plans, uh, you know, you're going to want to make sure to have some paperweights with you because it's going to be a bit breezy. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Although we're cloudy now, we are going to see those skies clear. By 10, we'll be at 80 degrees. By 11, we'll see mostly sunny skies. If you're planning a Mother's Day brunch or anything like that, this is how hot it's going to be during brunch. Temperatures are going to climb into the 90s by 1 p.m. We're going to have those south winds at about 15 miles per hour. And then we're looking at a forecast high of 99 degrees in San Antonio. A few uh, local sites will technically hit 100 degrees today, uh, but it's going to feel that way anyway. As I showed you, the, the heat index value going to be a hot one. Satellite and radar, all of the rainfall is well north of Texas, working its way through uh, Minnesota right now. We've got a ridge of high pressure that's built in, and you can see in the upper levels that it's really sending all of the rain up and over Texas. Now, this high pressure system is going to settle over Texas and the Mississippi River in the coming days, keeping things dry for us. May is typically our rainiest month. We're not going to see any significant rain. Uh, this week and this ridge of high pressure is going to build heat across the nation so that by the end of the week, Areas like Chicago, Minneapolis, they're going to be looking at highs in the 90s as well as in San Antonio. So that is a very, very big uh, heat uh, dome across the nation. In fact, there could be times where areas north of uh, Texas are going to be a lot hotter than San Antonio this week. We are just, though, going to be seeing temperatures in the mid 90s all week long. Very little to no chance for rain. And again, in May, we we usually see more than four inches of rain. It does not look good for our summer when our May is this dry. So coming up, we're going to take another look uh, at uh, those forecast heat index values today so that you can find a way to stay cool. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 648, 75 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, we're giving you a glimpse inside U.S. Air Force basic training and revealing what it means to aim high. And let's take a live look out at the roadways. Not too many people out and about just yet on this Mother's Day Sunday, but if you do plan to head out there, bring some extra water, bring a hat, 
Ring sunblock, as Sarah Costa has been preaching this morning. And everyone's letting their mom sleep in this morning. Very nice. All right, it's Mother's Day. Aww. This is our editor extraordinaire, Tim. This is his mom. Mary Kay. Mary Kay, happy Mother's Day. Um, all the mother. And this is our new editor, MJ. And this, man, y'all look like sisters. Look at them. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers, KSAT, and to all of our mom viewers out there. Good morning and welcome back. We know a lot of people go to college right after high school. A lot of people take some time off from hitting the books. And a very small and very brave percentage join our military. But what exactly does that experience look like? Our Jonathan Goto takes us through a portion of the Air Force's basic military training. Every young man and woman who enlists in the United States Air Force arrives here, San Antonio, Texas, Military City, USA. But their journey doesn't begin until they arrive at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland, better known as the gateway to the Air Force. New recruits will go through eight weeks of basic military training where they'll learn everything needed to become an American airman. Uh, before you come into the military, you're a civilian, you're worried about yourself at home. You only have you to watch out for. But when you come here, it's a teamwork aspect. You have to consider everybody else in this team and be able to come together and work together as one unity. Close ranks! Hatch. New recruits are introduced to drill from the moment they arrive at Lackland. Right. Hatch. An important component to a recruit's training. Forward. Hatch. Head. Top. 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 On this drill pad, they're out here approximately five to six hours a week. Uh, doing drill, if not more. Uh, sometimes we can pull them out here a little bit further. We have some downtime. We'll go out here and we can practice some more drill and really get that precision in there, get that discipline and instill excellence in them at all times. Throughout the eight-week training, recruits learn everything from the airmen's role in Air Force missions. Oh, place your weapon above your head. No. To basic place expeditionary airmen skills and training, also known as BEAST. No. Alarm yellow. I repeat, alarm yellow. Ah! Alarm. Yellow. So this exercise, this is a culmination of every single thing that the trainees have learned out in basic training. So when they come here from their line squadrons, they've already learned their base defense skills, which we call FEST, TCCC, which is how they treat a combat casualty. A realistic forward operating base environment where they practice wartime readiness skills, also receiving Air Force nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare training. So historically, at this point in time, this is kind of the difference where a trainee really really starts to become an airman or they can fulfill that mission that the Air Force needs for them to meet overseas in different locations. How crucial is this training? Extremely crucial. So this right here, baseline, many of these trainees from the day one when they hit the ground will be ready for deployments. Gonzalez says though not all will deploy right away, they still have the skills needed to perform their job in a deployed environment if they're called to do that. So it all depends on where they go and what the threat is like. But as a minimum, every single basic training recruit when they become an airman is gonna to have to experience this training every 18 months for the rest of their career. Beast is a whole different level of training and conditioning. Instructors say the gear they wear during this specific training adds 15 degrees of body heat to what they're already experiencing. They say many of the recruits experience exhaustion and dehydration. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll bring you the second part of this story, the moment all recruits and families have been waiting for. We'll take you through the airman's run and graduation. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 6.55, 75 degrees out. All right, Sarah Spivey will have a final look at our forecast coming up after the break. going to be hot today. Here's a look at the forecast heat index values. You can see it can feel like 104 in San Antonio, but really anywhere from 101 to 107. So find a way to stay cool, limit strenuous activity outdoors, find shade, stay hydrated, check on those who don't have air conditioning, never leave children or pets in a vehicle, and make sure to provide those pets with plenty of water or just simply bring them inside. Now the week ahead, although technically we're not going to reach 100, it's going to feel like it's close 
close to 100 in the week ahead. Very warm, very hot, very humid, and only a 10% chance for a stray storm on Tuesday. So this is just not a great forecast for us, especially given the fact that we usually see our, our most amount of uh, Rain in the month of May. Rain is our rainiest month. May is our rainiest month. There you go. So we could use some rain, but it's just not in the cards this week for us. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. We're going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America. we got a lot more coming up at 8 a.m. We have all of the local election results, and, of course, we're going to break down what the redistricting for city council districts in San Antonio means and why you should care. Live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A man is shot while allegedly trying to break into a West Side home. What he did as first responders tried to help him has authorities scratching their heads. And a suspected gunman gets into a shootout with police in the city of Round Rock, and it prompted a shelter in place order for neighbors over there. We have the latest details from investigators. 76 degrees at oh. 8 a.m. as we start this Mother's Day. You can see that humidity just like lingering out there. Sarah Spivey will let us know how warm things will get in just a bit. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday, May 8th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And happy Mother's Day to all the amazing moms out happy there. Happy Mother's Day. Um, hopefully everyone's able to stay inside mm -hmm. and keep mom nice and cool and pampered. Because, Sarah, it's going to be... <sighs> Pretty brutal. Woo, it's going to be hot today, Sarah and Max. Yesterday, we got a record high of 101. Today, it's going to feel like 101 to 107. Outside right now, warm start to the day. We usually see a morning low this time of year in the mid 60s, but it's already in the mid to upper 70s. 76 in San Antonio, 77 in Pleasanton, 76 in Hondo, 77 Eagle Pass. Closer to uh, the metro area, at 76 at Port SA, 75 in Converse, 72 in Seguin, 75 in Canyon Lake, 72 in Bernie and in Kerrville. It is Mother's Day. If you're planning on celebrating and if you're just planning on being out and about today, this is a look at how hot it's going to be. We'll be at 79 at 10, but we'll see clearing skies and then temperatures will skyrocket. By noon, we'll be close to 90 and for the afternoon forecast high 99. Now, yes, that's a couple of degrees cooler than yesterday, but the humidity today is going to stay high. And so this is a look at the forecast heat index values today, anywhere from 100 to 107 around San Antonio. Very hot today and not a ton of relief in the future over the next several days. I'll have a look ahead coming up in a bit. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, an attempted burglary ends with a homeowner firing his weapon. The suspect is now in the hospital. So take a look. This is what we know this morning. It happened on the west side on Wilmot, right off of North General McMullen around 1.30 this morning. Police on the scene telling us the man heard someone breaking into his home. The man grabbed his gun and shot the suspect. Now that suspect took off, but he didn't get very far. EMS actually finding him down the street, tried to give him medical attention inside the ambulance. Police say the suspect got angry, jumped out of the ambulance and tried to take off again. Now, officers finally finding him and taking him to the hospital. At last check, he is in stable condition. Well, San Antonio voters approved the city's largest ever bond last night. That's right. It's the election that we've been talking about for a while. It is a $1.2 billion bond. In Bear County, more than 91,000 votes cast in total. That's about 7.6 of the county's 1.2 million registered voters. The bond was broken up into six propositions from streets to drainage to parks, even affordable housing. All six of those things passed. All right, Mayor Ron Nuremberg declaring victory before 10 p.m. last night for all six of the props, making up again that $1.2 billion bond package. At that point, at 10 o'clock last night, each of the props, A through F, had between about a 60% and 72% approval. Now, Mayor Ron Nuremberg saying that the results showed voters have faith in the city's future and have faith in each other as San Antonians. We are laser focused on keeping the promise that we all made to each other back when the, in the height of the last two years challenges, which is that we are not satisfied to going back to the way things were. We want to come back stronger, more equitable, and more resilient as a city, and that's what this vote says. The city has said that this bond program will not raise the property tax rate. 
And now to the two state constitutional amendments. The first will impact property taxes for elderly and disabled homeowners. We're talking about Prop 1. The item would reduce the amount of property taxes the elderly and disabled would have to pay to public schools. All right, so taking a look at the final results, this amendment easily passing more than 80% of the vote. Now, voters in Bear County voting a similar way as the rest of the people across the Lone Star State. 85% for, only 15% against. Another constitutional amendment focused on everyone's homestead exemption. This would help property owners on their property taxes. All right, so this is Prop 2. It would raise that homestead exemption from $25,000 to $40,000. And according to the Texas Tribune, homeowners would save about $176 on average on their property tax bill. Let's take a look at those results. This amendment also easily passing last night with more than 80% of the vote when compared to Bear County. Voters in Bear County were nearly identical to how the state voted. All right, and so we are obviously covering a lot of election results. Several local school districts putting their own ideas to voters yesterday, but none bigger than Northside ISD's nearly $1 billion proposal. The $992 million bond was approved by 57% of the voters, or Jonathan Cotto joins us live from the elections office. Jonathan, what should people know about this bond? Good morning, Max and Sarah. That's right. The $992 million bond program was approved by 50% of voters. The school district is saying the bond program will not have a tax increase. However, the bond will pay for upgrading over 20 existing Northside ISD schools, some of which are decades old. The largest part of the proposal allots $645.5 million to be invested in schools such as John Jay, Holmes, and Taft High Schools. And NISD Superintendent Dr. Brian Wood says this bond proposal is urgent because costs are only increasing. This includes upgrades like HVAC units, replacing roofs that don't leak, and replacing floors that have become problematic. The proposal also includes technology, security, transportation, and library upgrades. A total of $45 million is slated for a new elementary school in the village at West Point area. Wood says this proposal is mostly about giving more opportunities for students in older schools to succeed. Now, right now, over on KSAT.com, we have a complete breakdown of this bond as well as other results from election night. Reporting live outside of the elections office, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Other top stories we're following this morning. A suspected shooter in the Round Rock neighborhood dead this morning after a terrifying situation unfolded just yesterday. Police say a gunshot victim called officers, and when officers arrived to the scene, they say the suspect was wearing body armor, opened fire at the officers with an AK-47 style rifle. Numerous law enforcement agencies responded to the scene, including an armored vehicle. Multiple rounds fired back and forth during this gunfight between police and the suspect. Now, later, that suspect was found in a wooded area dead. Unclear if he was killed in the shootout with police or if he took his own life. We are still waiting to learn the specific details from investigators. All right, well, back here at home in San Antonio, the population in and around the Alamo City is booming so much so that an advisory committee has created a first draft of a new district map based on the latest census numbers. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Assisti Assistant City Attorney Ileana castillo Daly. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Ileana. You're welcome. Good morning. All right, so for those who don't know, why should they care about city council redistricting because it's a really just interesting topic uh no but for the real reason is the u.s constitution so it, one of the most valuable and precious rights we're guaranteed through the u.s constitution is the right to representation right many of us went to the polls whether it was the early voting uh, as you guys previously talked about or yesterday um that's what it comes down to right so that my vote where i am uh, whether I'm voting uh, here, we're talking about city council, but whether I'm voting for a congressional leader or um, a state representative, it matters as much as the person living in a different uh, or neighboring district. So, Ileana, what are the goals of San Antonio's redistrict redistricting plan? So, it's, it's a goal, um, and then it's also something that's another important thing, is this is the first time the city of San Antonio has used a citizens advisory committee. So the members of the redistricting advisory committee are all our neighbors, 
all fellow members of the public here in San Antonio who are doing the map drawing. So in previous uh, cycles, it was done by attorneys like me working with city council or city staff. Um, here is uh, members of the public, they're doing that map drawing, they're listening to their neighbors, they're taking that into consideration. So the goals defined by these neighbors of ours, um, well, there's the legal one, right? So we need to rebalance the population. The city of San Antonio is, yes, booming. We now have approximately 1.43 million people in the city of San Antonio, uh, all that growth, of, uh, growth over the last decade did not happen proportionately throughout our city. So we got to rebalance it, right? There's a lot of growth. Uh, District 8, for example, is the uh, most populated. Uh, one in five need to gain some more population through this process. So it's balancing that, right? That's a very basic legal goal. Another one would be throughout this process, we do not, we cannot um, reduce or diminish the, the strength of a voice uh, in San Antonio, uh, for example, the Latino vote or the African-American black vote. Uh, we can't do that. Those are another legal principles uh, and goals. Uh, but back to our neighbors, right, who are sitting at the table and doing the map drawing, a big goal of theirs has been communities of interest, right, to keep these communities of interest throughout our community intact in these districts. So a big thing they've looked at, looked at are neighborhoods. Um, neighborhoods and other communities of interest, uh, you know, uh, throughout our city and keeping those intact and listening to them. So that those have been very big goals. There's others, um, but I would say those are the, the top three. Now, obviously, population playing a huge role in making these plans. How do you guys anticipate what the future of San Antonio's population going to look like? It seems like we're growing up and out. So do you guys use that to anticipate what the lines will look like? That's a very good question, and that actually comes up pretty pretty regularly. Um, in these meetings. So the advisory committee um, is bound by the 2020 census data, right? And that's what told us the 1.43 million approximate number. And they have to use that. There was some discussion about planning for the next 10 years. And they can do that to the extent that um, it still uh, follows the other guidelines that I mentioned, the legal and then uh, the priorities that they have. Uh, but it's really about those 2020 census data. And it's not simply about the amount of growth, but where the growth has happened. So if, if somebody goes and looks at, and I encourage uh, you to go and look at the committee draft plan one that we have on SA Speak Up and at some of our local libraries, um, you will notice that the borders of District 3, for example, have remained essentially the same and untouched. Two, relatively the same, four, relatively the same, because those grew, but they grew proportionate. Eight changes significantly because a lot of that growth that happened happened there. So it's not simply the amount of growth, but where the growth happened. And as far as planning, the advisory committee uh, must look at what the data is for 2020. So we, we recognize that even today we have more people than we did when we started the process, you know, eight, nine months ago. Um, but they have to use that 2020 census data. Well, Eliana, thank you so much for joining us, especially on Mother's Day. I see some pictures of kiddos behind you, yeah. so I hope they <laughs> pamper you. And for our viewers, we have redistricting, redistricting meeting dates right now on ksat.com as, as well. You can find this full conversation uh, with Eliana later in the morning. Thank you, ma'am. Time now, just about 813, 76 degrees out. Well, still to come, a big event is helping to reduce the number of stray and unwanted animals in San Antonio. How a local partnership is providing resources where it's needed most. And it is hot. Yesterday was record-breaking heat. Today, looks like it's going to be just as bad. A reminder of how you can get out of the heat, and we have some tips on how to stay cool. It's already 76 degrees at 813 this morning. All that humidity just uh, hanging around for Mother's Day. Sarah Spivey will have our full forecast when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. So yesterday, record-breaking heat, and today, it's going to be hot. Yeah, round two. So yesterday's temperatures in San Antonio, heat and today will be around the same. It's why city officials are again opening cooling centers today. So some people have places to go to beat the heat. The county is also opening its two cooling centers again for today. Remember, stay in the shade, drink lots of water, don't overdo it, and just head to ksat.com 
for a list of all of those cooling center locations. All right, Sarah Spivey, what can we expect? Well, like you guys were saying yesterday, we, we hit record highs. And here's a look at yesterday's high temperature. 101 in San Antonio, that beats the record of 100 uh, yesterday. So uh, very hot. It even got up to 107 Del Rio, 108 Creases Springs, 107 in Laredo. Now the thermometer will technically be a couple of degrees uh, cooler than yesterday, but the humidity is going to stay high all day long. Dew points are very high right now in the 70s. That is a summertime dew point. It is just oppressively humid. And if you were watching the forecast yesterday, I showed this dew point forecast graphic. Yesterday, we got to see the dew points drop down into the 50s in the afternoon, a big drop here. But this afternoon, we are not going to see the drop. It's going to stay humid all day long. And that means dangerous heat index values in the afternoon. Here's a look at your future cast. We do have some clouds out there right now, but those skies will clear quickly and we'll be looking at total sunshine this afternoon. This is a look at the forecast highs, so not the heat index values yet. We'll get up to 99 in San Antonio, 99 in Seguin, 102 Port SA, 102 Hondo, 98 in Kerrville, 98 in Comfort, 103 in Pleasanton, 102 in Floresville. But this is a look at the forecast heat index values. It could feel up to 104 around San Antonio. 100 in Bernie, 104 in Castroville, 104 in Floresville. In fact, anywhere from 100 to 107, that's what it's going to feel like around the San Antonio metro area today because the humidity is going to stay high. Take a look outside. You can already see the sun starting to peek through the clouds, but the big thing that stands out to me is how humid it is. You can see the humidity there on the horizon. And in fact, visibility is lower in some places because of how humid it is. Port say visibility is only at about four miles. So this is another picture of how humid it is. You know, humidity is invisible, but sometimes when it's high enough, you can actually see some condensation out there, and that's exactly what we're seeing. KSAT 12 hour forecast calls for those clearing skies. By noon, we're going to be at 90 degrees, just about 90 degrees. It's Mother's Day. If you're planning on taking mom out to brunch, know that it's going to be hot. Temperatures before noon will be in the 80s, but afternoon, we're going to be climbing quickly into the 90s and under total sunshine. Winds are going to be from the south at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then we're forecasting a high of 99. Even tonight is going to be very warm. We're not really going to cool down all that much after sunset. Temperatures will still be in the 80s. If we have one thing that could help us out, it is the fact that it is going to be a bit breezy. And so winds will be gusting from the south up to about 25 miles per hour today. So if you can find some shade, at least there will be a breeze from the south at about 25 miles per hour. All right, bigger picture here on the satellite radar across the nation really uh, just some good rains across parts of uh, Minnesota and Iowa, but a ridge of high pressure is settling over Texas and that's why we're seeing all the rain go up and over. And over the next coming days, this high pressure system is going to settle over the Mississippi River Valley. It's going to keep us dry over the next seven days. Generally, we have a 10% chance for a stray shower on Tuesday, but this is not going to bring us any kind of soaking May rain that we usually need this time of year in order to uh, survive over the summer as far as uh, rain goes. Otherwise, it's going to be hot every day this week. Temperatures are going to be close to 95 with a heat index near 100. So it is going to feel very hot over the next few days. Coming up, Another closer look at what you can expect across the state of Texas in the week ahead. Sarah and Max. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 821, 76 degrees out. All right, coming up on GMSA, a local organization's effort to decrease the number of stray animals in our city. And it's Mother's Day, and we want to give a shout out to our KSAT moms. This is our Aww. director, Jeff, who's directing our show right now. This is his mom, Joanne. She's a big Spurs fan. They have season tickets. She's also a big fan of KSAT. And next up. This is Stephen Chavez's mom, one of Aww. our phenomenal pho photographers. He says this is his mom, Gloria, who they're at a Judas Priest concert. <laughs> she's a cool mom. He also said, cool mom. my mom left to the Bahamas this weekend without me. <laughs> so she's living her best life. She deserves it. Happy yes, Mother's Day does. to all those amazing moms out there.
Good morning and welcome back. A local partnership helping you control the pet and animal population right here in the Alamo City. They're doing it one snip at a time at an event. Spay, Neuter, Inject, Protect San Antonio or SNPSA hosted its 53rd Big Fix event with the help of their partners Animal Care Services. San Antonio Fire Department and HEB, more than 450 pets were spayed and neutered in a single day. Vaccinations and microchipping were also offered at no cost. All right, event open for people living in certain zip codes identified by Animal Care Services as areas that would benefit from resources coming to them. The goal, reduce the number of animals able to reproduce and cut down on the city's overpopulation. You can read the full article right now. KSET.com. Time now, just about 827, 77 degrees out. Well, coming up on GMSA in our next half hour, as Germany prepares to celebrate its victory over the Nazis, Ukraine citizens are being warned that attacks could worsen. We'll have the latest on the war. All right, it is Mother's Day, so we are here celebrating some of the mothers of the people working here. This is Tim, uh, one of our top editors. This is his mom, Mary Kay. So happy Mother's Day to Mary he Kay. Says, his mom, don't hurt him for putting her picture on TV. This is MJ. <laughs> this is her mom, Terry Hall. She is a gardener. She lives in San Antonio. And MJ says, I love you, mom, and you're my best friend. Good morning and welcome back and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It is Mother's Day, Sunday, May 8th. Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms out there. Of course. And for anyone who has Mother's Day plans, maybe that's a brunch, head outside. Bring water, bring a big hat. Maybe and like have brunch at an AC mm, inside. Yeah. <laughs> Patios are going to be tough this yeah. morning, Sarah. Ooh, not only tough to get into restaurants today, but tough if you're sitting outside because, you know, it is going to be very humid all day long and hot. Take a look outside right now with live cam. You can see the humidity thick in the air out there right now. We're starting off with some clouds, but we'll be quickly seeing some sun. Take a look at the humidity too. dew points in the upper in the upper 60s, low 70s. That is at the top of our humidity scale. And when we take a look at the satellite, there are some areas of clouds, especially west of San Antonio. Plenty of cloud cover there. We're in the 70s. You know, we're much warmer than seasonably average. We usually see a morning low right around 64 this time of year. And as we take a closer view, you can see that these clouds are starting to thin out already around San Antonio. It's 79 at Simpson, 75 in Converse, 76 in New Braunfels, 75 in Rio Medina, and 73 in Kerrville. But this is going to be the coolest part of the day for your Mother's Day forecast, your Sunday forecast. Clearing skies will already be near 90 at noon, 99 for the forecast high today. But here's the kicker heat index 101 to 107 because of the high humidity. We will at least have wind gusts of up to about 25 miles per hour from the south. So if you find some shade, there will be a breeze. But coming up, I'll show you just how hot it's going to be not only today, but for the week ahead as well. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Happening tomorrow, Governor Greg Abbott is stopping in San Antonio again to discuss parents' roles in education. Abbott was just in San Antonio last month for a roundtable discussion on law enforcement and safety. Tomorrow, the governor wants to share his plans on how he wants to make sure parents make the final decisions regarding their children. The campaign event is slated to take place tomorrow at 6 p.m. at the Pika Pika Plaza Event Center that's on the city's southeast side on Military Drive. Well, San Antonio voters approved the city's largest ever bond last night, $1.2 billion. All right, there's a lot to break down. Jonathan Cotto joining us live from the elections office with more. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. That bond was broken down into six propositions from streets to drainage to parks and even affordable housing. All six passing. Now, Mayor Ron Nuremberg declaring victory last night, close to 10 p.m. for those six propositions, making up the $1.2 billion bond package. At that point, each of the propositions, A through F, had between 59.9% and 72.4% approval. Some of the highlights in the bond include $103.5 million for expanding the Greenway Trail System by another 21 miles, $100.5 million to reconstruct failed streets around the city, improvements to 30% of city's parks, including nine new park properties, and $150 million for affordable housing. Mayor Ron Nuremberg said the results showed voters' faith in the city's future and in each other as San Antonians. We are laser focused on keeping the promise that we all made to each other back when the, in the height of the last two years challenges. 
which is that we are not satisfied to going back to the way things were. We want to come back stronger, more equitable, and more resilient as a city, and that's what this vote says. Now, the city has said the bond program will not raise uh, tax, the tax property rate. We're going to continue to follow everything that happened on Election Day. We have a complete breakdown of election results posted for you over on KSAT.com. Reporting live outside of the elections office, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Now to the war in Ukraine. Ukrainian leaders are warning that attacks could only worsen leading up to Russia's holiday on Monday that celebrates defeating the Nazis 77 years ago. President Zelensky urging people to heed air raid warnings. ABC's Karina Mitchell explains. As Russia gets ready to celebrate Victory Day on Monday, the day Soviet forces defeated Nazi Germany, Russian forces are intensifying their attacks in Ukraine. These images posted by Ukrainian government officials show a school in Luhansk they say was bombed by Russian forces. 90 people were taking shelter there. 30 people were rescued Saturday. Rescue efforts are resuming today. Six missiles struck the port city of Odessa on Saturday. Ukraine's military command said four rockets hit a furniture factory in a residential area. CIA Director William Burns with a warning about Russian President Vladimir Putin's new offensive. He's in a frame of mind in which he doesn't believe he can afford to lose. Meantime, the Ukrainians are fighting back. They released dramatic new video they say shows drone strikes destroying a Russian ship in the Black Sea, also pushing the Russians further back from the Kharkiv region in the northeast and south. In Mariupol, Ukrainian officials say all women, children and elderly civilians have made it out of the Azovstal steel plant. Nearly six million people have fled Ukraine since February. First Lady Jill Biden meeting with some of them while in Romania. Wasn't it heartbreaking, the little girl that said her wish was to be with her daddy, and then another said, my wish is to go home. I mean, you could see it. Those children really have suffered. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Well, the 62-year-old man accused of shooting 29 people on the New York City subway is facing two federal charges. According to an indictment, Frank James is facing one count of a terrorist attack as well as a firearms charge. If convicted, he faces a maximum sentence of life in prison. James was arrested on April 13th for the shooting in Brooklyn that left close to 30 people hurt and 10 of those people injured by gunfire. The man known for the honky-tonk John Travolta appeared in in the movie Urban Cowboy has died. Country star Mickey Gilly was 86 years old. As a recording artist, Gilly charted 17 number one country records over the course of his career. In 1989, he was one of the first major country singers to open up his own theater in Branson, Missouri. That is where he passed away. Now, Gilly is survived by his cousin, the legendary rock and roll piano man, Jerry Lee Lewis. All right, so we know today is Mother's Day, and we have so many amazing moms in and around the Alamo City and so many amazing mothers who work right here at KSAT, and they are highlighting what is so important to them and their families. Oh, look at that. It's such an adorable picture. Myra Arthur with her kiddos. And oh, Courtney. Yeah. Yeah, Courtney. And you can read all of this right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Time now, 838, 77 degrees out. Well, still to come, a local theater company is offering up a free show and a one-time performance happening at the Botanical Gardens. We'll tell you everything you need to know if you want to attend. The Botanical Gardens like your spot. I love that spot. All right, speaking of spots, what about staying in a spot? Booking a stay with Marriott could mean, get this, staying at a private home. We're going to explain how this global hotel chain is now taking on Airbnb. 77 degrees at 8.38 this morning. It is a muggy, muggy, very warm start to our Mother's Day. Sarah Spivey will have our full Mother's Day forecast when we come back. Good morning. Coming up on this week after that bombshell leak from the Supreme Court showing the justices could be preparing to overturn Roe versus Wade, we'll talk with legal experts and activists from both sides about the abortion rights battle, plus exclusive interviews with Senator Amy Klobuchar and Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson, and all the political fallout with our powerhouse roundtable. And as the White House sounds the alarm over a fall and winter COVID surge, we'll speak with Dr. Shish Jha about rising cases throughout the country. It's all coming up on This Week. Well, the world's largest hotel company is trying to take on Airbnb directly by offering private homes 
for rentals. So Marriott International has signed up 60,000 properties to add to its 1.5 million hotel rooms. The hotel chain is says it created its homes and villas offering to meet the growing demand for short term rentals. All of its properties come with its guarantees as well as as the loyalty rewards program. In many cases, travelers can also receive hotel benefits like access to resort amenities without having to go inside the lobby. All right. What's next on the Elon Musk chapter? Big plans for Twitter. The entrepreneur and head of Tesla says he wants to boost the social media platform's annual revenue to get this, $26 billion by the year 2028. It's important to mention that that would be a huge jump because the last Fiscal year's revenue was only five billion, so it'd be more than five times. Last year, again, five billion, but in the plan, advertising revenue would only fall to 45% of total revenue. That would be down 90% from 2020, and there'd be a projected $12 billion in ad revenue that would combine with another $10 billion from subscriptions in 2028. Remember, Musk closed on the deal to buy Twitter last month for $44 billion. So there you go, all right, speaking of Twitter, Katie Blake and our Sarah Spivey must follows because well, thank you. that's how I get all of my weather information. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's going to be hot today, so there's some more weather information for you. <laughs> we are going to be seeing temperatures soar into the upper 90s with heat index values even hotter than that. We started off with complete cloud cover, but take a look out there right now. You can see the blue skies there at the top of your screen as sun is peeking through those clouds. These clouds are temporary and the heat is on. It is 76 degrees outside right now. Dew points in the 70s. Winds from the south at about 10 miles per hour. That dew point in the 70s, that is very humid. Top of the humidity scale. It's 76 in Hondo, 79 in Pleasanton, 77 in Austin, 76 in New Braunfels, 72 in Rock Springs, 79 in Eagle Pass, and 76 in Del Rio. But this is how hot it's going to be this afternoon. Look at the forecast highs. We'll be at 99 in San Antonio, even hotter off to the west, 103 in Valdi, 103 in Pleasanton, 106 in Catula, and it'll be 99 in Canyon Lake and Kerrville. But the real kicker today is that the humidity is going to stay high. High temperature of 99 in Seguin as we take a closer look at the metro area, 100 in New Braunfels, 102 in Lackland, 100 downtown San Antonio, upper 90s for Bernie and Leon Springs. Like I mentioned, that humidity is going to stay high all day today. Yesterday we had a dip in the humidity. Dew points got down into the 50s in the afternoon. That allowed for us not to have as much of a heat index value, but today that is not going to be the case. Staying humid all day for us. So this is a look at what it will actually feel like like outside feeling like 104 in San Antonio, 105 in New Braunfels, 106 in Hondo, even 111 Catula, 112 in Laredo. This is dangerously hot, so please make sure to stay hydrated if you're outside, especially between the hours of 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. That's the peak heat of the day. Try to find some shade if you can, because in the shade you'll be able to feel the breeze. Winds are expected to be a bit breezy from the south, gusting up to about 25 miles per hours, so thank goodness there will be at least a breeze for us. And we're really not going to see much relief from the heat over the coming days. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast starting off with clouds now, but temperatures are going to be quickly climbing as soon as we see complete sun closer to noon. By noon, we're going to be at 90 degrees. If you're planning on taking mom out to lunch, this is how hot it's going to be. Temperatures are going to climb into the mid 90s by 2 p.m. Again, winds from the south at about 15 miles per hour. We'll talk off at 99 for the high temperature and it's really not going to get cool tonight either. Temperatures are going to stay elevated in the 80s after sunset closer to 8. Now across the nation, it's fairly quiet in the central plains, but we do have some good rainfall across parts of uh, Minnesota and Iowa. This is north of this ridge of high pressure, which is sending all of the rain up and over the state of Texas and this high is going to be moving over the Mississippi in the coming days. So it's going to be keeping us dry in Texas for the next several days. And then as it moves across the Mississippi, it's going to take the heat and spread it across a good portion of the United States. So areas like Chicago, Minneapolis, they're going to be just as warm as San Antonio and San Antonio is going to be hot temperatures in the low 90s. Here's the thing, though. These areas are going to be seeing temperatures 25 to 30 degrees warmer than 
average. Our average high temperature this time of year is 84. So that would be like if we had high temperatures forecast at about 110 degrees. So much of the nation is going to be a lot hotter than average because of that high. That includes San Antonio. San Antonio is going to be looking at high temperatures in the mid 90s. Looks like we're going to be seeing heat index values in near 100 degrees. What do you get when you combine classic theater with a modern touch? Well, San Antonio, you are in for a treat because the classic theater of San Antonio is bringing you a new version of a classic play that also brings in the audience. The show is called Examining Miss Alliance, George Bernard Shaw at the Classic Theater and Producing Ethically Today. And it is an examination of the way that our patrons and the theater community want to see classic theater produced here in San Antonio. What excites me most about this show is that the community will have the opportunity to weigh in give us their thoughts. We came across some things that just raised some questions, right? The way that minorities were described, definitely the attitudes towards women, and also just some tenets about the life of George Bernard Shaw that made us ask some questions. And theater is all about asking questions, and it's about creating a dialogue, and part of our mission is to create community conversation. I thought, let's use this as a springboard, let's ask the community to join us, let's honor our relationship with the several artists that we have already contracted to be a part of this play and the, the San Antonio Botanical Gardens that has been so wonderful all throughout the uh, pandemic and allowing us to produce here. And I was like, let's go ahead and honor all of these relationships and bring something here that might be even more impactful than just a really fun evening at the theater. We're going to ask some tough questions. We're gonna dig deep. Think about how are you feeling about this whole process of theater? How are you feeling about how our community is evolving? This uh, performance is completely free, right? It's free on purpose so that everybody can feel like it's accessible, everybody can feel like they can come and have a voice and feel like they're part of what we are doing. So are you coming? Well, first, you need a reservation. We have all the information you need on KSAT.com. I'm Stefania Jimenez for KSAT 12 News. All right, it's free. There you go. 850, 77 degrees out. Well, earlier on GMSA, we showed you what it's like for those who are in basic military training tomorrow on GMSA. We'll take a look at the end of that journey to graduation day. All right, so it is Mother's Day, and we want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the amazing moms out there, and of course, some of the amazing moms of the people who work here. That's Jonathan Cotto's mom, Leticia. They said they took this game at the Mexican national team for soccer, for a soccer game. Happy Mother's Day to Miss Leticia, and this is Carlo, one of our amazing producers. His mom's name is Yvonne. She is an elementary teacher at Cerna Elementary. Happy Mother's Day, Miss Yvonne. Well, we just got the pollen count in. Molds are elevated. They're moderate at 590 up from yesterday. We've also got grass and pecan present, but in very low amounts. Here's a look at how hot it's going to be today. This is the forecast heat index value for the day. It'll feel anywhere from 100 to 107 around San Antonio. Please try to limit strenuous activity outdoors. Stay hydrated. Be in the shade as much as you can. And in the week ahead, again, it's going to stay hot in the week ahead. Temperatures are going to be in the mid 90s, but the humidity will be high, so it'll feel closer to 100. No significant chance for rain except for Tuesday when a stray shower or storm could be possible. Happy Mother's Day, everyone out there. I want to wish my mother, Aww. Debbie, a happy Mother's Day. She is awesome and I'm really proud to be called her daughter. And happy Mother's Day to my mom. Happy Mother's Day to all the amazing moms out there, all the viewers who are moms. We've been showcasing some of the amazing moms to some of the people who work here and some of the amazing moms who do work here. So mom, happy Mother's Day. Couldn't ask for a better role model. And this is my mom, Patty. It was taking our at my wedding in March. Uh, happy Mother's Day, mom. I love you. Um, thank you for always being there for me and listening to me and keeping my earring collection just <laughs> at the top there of this go. game. I love Some the pictures support. that pop up and we're all like kind of put on the spot. Like if our moms are watching, like what would you say if that was your mom? <laughs> so that's fun. So as we have about 30 seconds, are you guys doing anything special today? I'll call my mom. I'll call my my uh, grandmother. And of course, I'll, I'll try to call my aunt too. My aunt Shelly is a lot like my mom too. Aww. 
Yeah, I, I went and surprised my mom on my days off Thursday, Friday. So we already celebrated Mother's Day. Nice. All right. So once again, thank you so much for watching and happy Mother's Day to all the amazing moms out there.